we are expecting the lord to move mightily tunatarajia bwana akaweze kutembea kwa ukuu he is going to take us to another level hatatupeleka kiwango kingine we are not going to remain where we were yesterday hatutaendelea kukaa mahali tulipokuwa jana i want your heart to be expectant nataka moyo wako ukaweze kuwa na matarajio because the lord moves us from one degree of glory to another maana mungu anatuamisha kutoka kwa kiwango kimoja cha utukufu hadi kingine he is not a stagnant God. Ye, yeye si Mungu wa kutulia mahali pamoja. He is a moving God. Yeye ni Mungu anayetembea. Anatembea. He does a new thing. Anafanya mambo mapya. It's our day of celebration. Maana hii ni siku ya kusherekea. I can feel already the celebration mood is around. Kwa hivyo tayari na si, na hii si uh, kule kusherekea tayari kuko. I don't only feel I can see Si atinaisi naona I can see I can feel ninaona ninaisi and I am excited about it na hiyo ninaifurahia praise the lord bwana asifiwe so stand up on your feet kwa hivyo simama mbinguni pako we are going to go to the next level of this tunaenda kiwango kingine katika sehemu hii we are privileged tume tunukiwa to have one of the choice servants that we have in our nation kuwa na mtumishi wa Mungu ambaye tuko naye katika taifa letu. Here in JCC we love him. Hapa JCC tunampenda. We cannot have enough of him. Hatuwezi tosheka na yeye. We wish we wish he could be coming more often. Tunaomba angekuwa akija kila wakati. We wish we, we wish he could be coming more often. Oh, tunatamani hawe akiendelea kuja. So this morning, kwa hivyo asubuhi ya leo, we are going to bring to this platform Tunaenda kumleta katika madhambao haya to pour his heart and release what the Lord has put in his heart. Ili akaweze kumwaga na kuachilia kile ambacho Mungu amempa. I would beg you to be attentive. Ningetaka uweze kuwa uh, utulie na ngojee Bwana. Everything. Na ukamate kila kitu. I want you to help me bring to this platform Reverend Julian Chula. Nataka mnisaidie kumleta Reverend Julian Chula. Are you ready for the word? Je, mko tayari kwa ajili ya neno? I'm ready. Are you ready? Niko tayari. Je, mko tayari? Three things that determine how any meeting is going to go. Vitu vitatu ambavyo viazimia jinsi mkutano wowote utakavyokwenda. The presence of God. Uwepo wa Mungu. And he is here. Na yuko hapa. The second thing that determines how any meeting will go is the preparation of the servant of God. Cha pili ambacho huazimia jinsi mkutano utakavyokwenda ni ule ma yale maandalizi ya mtumishi wa Mungu. And I'm prepared. Na niko tayari, nimejiandaa. But the third thing. Na kwa hiyo jambo la tatu is the expectation of the people. Ni tarajio la watu. Look at somebody and ask them, are you expectant? Second Kings chapter 4 verse 8. Wafalme wa pili mlango wa 4 mstari wa 8. You may sit. Unaweza kuketi. Now it happened one day when Elisha went to Shunem. There was a notable woman and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was as often as he passed by he would turn in there to eat some food and she said to her husband look now i know this is a holy man of god who passes by us regularly please let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed there for him and a table and a chair and a lampstand so it will be whenever he comes to us he can turn in there verse 11 And it happened on that day he came thither and he turned into the chamber and lay there and he said to Gehazi his servant call this Shunammite and when he had called her she stood before him and he said and, and he said unto him say now unto her <laughs> prophets can be stubborn because she's standing right there but he's telling Gehazi say now unto her Call this Shunamite um sorry behold thou hast been careful 
for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? Would thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among my people. In other words, I'm just fine. I have the phone networks of anybody I need to speak to. I'm just fine. And he said, when, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Verily she hath no child, and her husband is old. Note it says, it is her husband who is old, not her. Look at a young sister next to you and say, it's not me that is old. Mangalie dada mchanga kando yako mwambie sio mimi niliye mzee and he said call her and when he had called her she stood in the door and he said about this season he said she has no child he called her said when he had called her he stood in the door she stood in the door and he said about this season according to the time of life you shall embrace a son and she said, Nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie to thy handmaid. In other words, if I can look at the situation, she was saying, listen, I've been fine. Don't give me expectations or hopes. I never asked for this. And the woman conceived and bare a son at that season. Elisha had said unto her, according to the time of life. And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father to the reapers and he said unto his father my head my head and he said to the lad carry him to his mother and when he had taken him and brought him to his mother the child sat on his mother's knees till noon and then died and she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out and she called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses, that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, It shall be well. I want you to say it like you mean it. Say, It shall be well. Nataka useme kana kwamba unamaanisha una sema itakuwa vema. Then she saddled an ass and said to her servant, drive and go forward. Slack not thy riding for me except I bid thee. So she went and came unto the man of God to Mount Carmel. And it came to pass when the man of God saw her from afar off that he said to Gehazi a servant, Behold, yonder is that Shunammite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, It is well. And when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi, protocol, came near to thrust her away. And the man of God said, let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her. And the Lord hath hid it from me, and hath not told me. Then she said, did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? Then she said to Gehazi, gird up thy loins. Then he said to Gehazi, gird up thy loins. Take my staff in thy hand, go thy way. If you meet any man, salute him not. And if any salute thee, answer him not again. And lay my staff upon the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth, and as my soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. And Gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore he went again to meet him and told him, saying, The child is not awakened. And when Elisha was come into the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. 
He went in therefore and shut the door upon them twain and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up and lay upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands. And he stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Then he returned and walked into the house to and fro. And then he went up again and stretched himself upon the child. And the child sneezed seven times. And the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi and said, Call this Shunammite. And he called her. And when she was come in and unto him, he said, Take up thy son. Then she went, fell at his feet in worship, bowed herself to the ground, took up her son, and went out. This is the word of the Lord. I think I'll just go right in. Those of you that can have time to read it in Swahili, please read it for yourself until verse 37. <laughs> because it was a long scripture. Let us pray. Father in heaven, I bless you and honor you for this opportunity. I'm humbled to be sharing your word with your precious sheep. I am so thankful, Father, that you have given me this opportunity to just have life together with your children. Holy Spirit, bless every woman on fire. Bless the organizers of this amazing gathering. In Jesus name we pray. Somebody say amen. The Bible is filled with mysteries. The Bible tells us, I say this every time I come here, that it is the glory of God to conceal a matter. But it is the honor of kings to search it out. Proverbs 25, 2. Proverbs 25, 2. You have to understand when something is hidden, it has been hidden because it was meant to be found by a person that understood the secrets to where it was. Lazima uelewe kwamba wakati kitu kimepichwa kimepichwa kwa sababu kilikuwa kipatikane na mtu ambaye kilifichwa kwa sababu yake. One of the dilemmas I have seen as I've been a minister regarding faith is that faith conceals more than it reveals. Um, mambo uh, um, mambo ya kutatanisha ambayo nimeyapata katika huduma ni kwamba imani uficha zaidi ya inavyofunua you will discover in your walk with Christ that faith does not ignore the reality utatambua katika utembezi wako na Kristo kwamba imani haipuuzi uhalisi but it focuses it puts its focus on what God has said lakini huweka mtazamo wake katika kile Mungu amesema the last two years as I've come to you. Uh, the last two years, 2017 and 2018, were probably my toughest years. I found out what gets tested is not you. Lipata kwamba kujaribiwa. I found out what gets tested is not you. What gets tested is your faith. The Bible says that if you die in your day of adversity, your strength is small. I remember being in a hospital and I was being treated for something no doctor could understand. 
nakumbuka nikiwa hospitalini nikitibiwa kwa sababu ya kitu ambacho hata hakuna daktari angeweza kukielewa there were pipes all over and tubes all over and nobody found anything nilikuwa nimewekewa mipira kila mahali na hakuna aliyepata chochote i have claimed health nilikuwa na afya safi i know the scriptures about health ninajua maandiko kuhusiana na afya but sometimes even when you know them and when you are anointed your faith will be tested lakini wakati mwingine unapokuwa unayajua hayo maandiko na uko na imani na, na na imani ama uko umepakwa imani yako itajaribiwa what i need you to understand is that what is being tested is not you kile nahitaji uelewe ni kwamba kinachojaribiwa sio wewe ni imani It's yako your faith ni imani yako and what you must do is increase your level of faith na kile unachopaswa kufanya ni kuinua kiwango chako cha imani to be able to say god i don't know what you're doing ili uweze kujua kwamba useme kwamba mungu sijui unachofanya but i will trust you lakini nitakutumainia sometimes you'll reach a point when Your child will do things you never expected them to do. Wakati mwingine unafika wakati mtoto wako anafanya kitu ambacho hukutarajia kabisa afanye. Oh, but that's not the time to go and hide under our bed. Aha, lakini huo sio wakati wa kwenda kujificha chini ya kitanda. That's the time to lift up the word of God and say I look to the hills. Huo ndio wakati wa kuinua neno la Mungu na kusema na natazama milima. From where cometh my help? Maana msaada wangu natoka wapi? My help comes from the Lord. I can tell your maturity by how you behave when you're going through a trial. Naweza kuelezea juu ya ukomavu wako kwa jinsi utakavyojibiza au kuitikia wakati unapitia majaribu. But my prayer is that you will reach a place where your faith becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. Lakini ombi langu ni kwamba utafika mahali ambapo imani yako itakuwa hodari na hodari na hodari. Turn to two people next to you and say don't faint. Geukia watu wawili karibu na wewe waambie usizimie. Turn to the other one who's about to go get a visa and leave Kenya because they've given up and say don't give up yet. Mwambie mwingine ambaye yuko karibu kwenda kuchukua visa atoke Kenya kwa sababu amekata tamaa mwambie usiondoke. If God meant for you to be an American you'd have been born there. Kama Mungu alitaka uwe Mwamerika ungezaliwa kule. He gave you everything you need for Kenya. Alikupatia kila kitu unachohitaji kwa ajili ya Kenya. And you're a woman on fire. Na wewe ni mwanamke uliyejaa moto. And today we declare the thing that is not working shall work. Na leo tutatangaza kwamba kitu kile ambacho hakitendi kitatenda kazi. The Shunammite woman is one example of the women in the Bible that received their dead back alive. Uh, mwanamke mshunemu ni mmoja wa wale wanawake ambao walipokea wafu wao. She released her faith to defeat a hopeless situation. Aliachilia imani yake kushinda hali yake iliyokuwa haina matumaini. The death of her son. Kifo cha mwanae. If you can do what she did. Kama you, unaweza fanya alichofanya. You can get what she got. Unaweza pata alichopata. I'm here today in apostolic understanding to revive some things that have died in your life. Niko hapa na ufahamu wa kitume ili kufufua vitu vilivyokufa maishani mwako. Her story educates us how to use our faith to defeat a hopeless situation. Hadithi hiyo inatufundisha jinsi ya kutumia imani yetu kushinda hali zetu zilizopoteza matumaini. Now there are a few things that she did in order to get her son back to life. Kuna mambo machache aliyoyafanya ili kwamba aweze kumpokea mtoto wake akiwa amefufuliwa. Let me take a minute and describe her son here Wacha nichukue muda na nimfafanue mwana hapa I've been told by my wife Nimeambiwa na mke wangu and I have also read Na pia nimesoma that there is nothing as painful on the face of the earth Ya kwamba hakuna kitu kilicho na uchungu katika uso wa nje as giving birth Kama kupata mtoto I've been told that it is equivalent to all your bones getting crushed at the same time. Nimeambiwa kwamba inatoshana na mifupa yako yote iliyo kwa mwili wako ikivunjwa kwa wakati mmoja. That's why if men are the ones who used to have babies we would only be 100,000 people on earth 
Hiyo ndiyo sababu kama wanaume ndio wangekuwa wakipata watoto basi tungekuwa watu mia moja tu ulimwanguni. You are strong. Nyinyi mna nguvu ni hodari. And so after all that when what I want to describe as a son here is anything that has been painful to bring forth. Na kwa hiyo kile nataka kufafanua kama mwana hapa ni kwamba ni chochote ambacho kimepitisha kime mtu kwa uchungu ili kupatikana. There are few things she did and I want to give you a few of them that you can then take and start studying that and hearing what God will do regarding your situation. Kuna mambo machache aliyoyafanya nataka kukupatia hayo ili ukaanze kuyatumia ili Mungu akatende kuhusiana na hali yako. When her baby died. Ah mtoto wake alipokufa. What she the first thing that she did is that number one, she did not announce his death. Cha kwanza ambacho alifanya mtoto alipokufa ni kwamba hakutangaza kifo cha yule mtoto. She took the baby according to verse 21. Alimchukua yule mtoto sawa sawa na mstari wa 21. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God. Akaenda akamlaza juu ya kitanda cha yule mtu wa Mungu. And shut the door. Na akaufunga mlango. She did not announce to the world what had happened. Hakutangazia ulimwengu kilichotendeka. She did not confess the death of her son to other people. Akuungama au kukiri kifo cha mtoto wake kwa watu wengine. She did not accept that this was the end. Hakukubali kwamba huu ndio mwisho. She did not call a pity party to mourn the death of her son. Hakuita watu wa kumhurumia ili wapate kuomboleza kifo cha mwanae. You see she figured out announcing her son's death would be would be admitting that the devil had won. Unaona alipata mtazamo kwamba akikubali ama kitangaza kifo cha mwanae itakuwa ni ishara kwamba shetani ameshinda. This would make the devil rejoice and feel good about the woman's sorrow. Ah huyu shetani angefurahia na kushangilia kwa sababu ya huzuni ya yule mwanamke. This woman had an undefeated attitude. Mwanamke huyu alikuwa na tabia ya kutoshindwa. She showed her disapproval of the situation and refused in her heart to accept the death of her boy. Aliona hali ilivyo na akakataa kukubali moyoni mwake kwamba yule mtoto amekufa. This initiated and sponsored her miracle. Hii ilianzisha na ikasimamia muujiza wake. You see I want to tell somebody today that it took everything in your bank account to open that salon. Kwa hiyo nataka kuambia mtu hapa ulichukua kila kitu kilichokuwa katika hazina yako ya benki ukafungua a uh, salon. It took a lot of pain to go through all your in-laws to get that husband. Ah uh, ili kuchukua uchungu kupitia kwa wako wako wote ili kwamba umpate yule mume. And now some little girl thinks she can come and bring you pain for what you have spent your entire life raising. Na msichana mdogo mahali anafikiria kwamba anaweza kuja kuchukua kile ambacho umetumia muda wako wote wa maisha yako ukikilea. What she doesn't know is you don't walk by material things. Kile ambacho hajui ni kwamba hautembei na, ma na mambo ambayo yanaonekana ama mali. What the thief in your house does not know is that you move by revelation. Uh, kil, uh, mwizi nyumbani mwako hajui ni kwamba unatembea katika ufunuo. I am so excited about this meeting this morning. Thing is just dripping all over. Na sisimuka sana kwa ajili ya mkutano huo kwa sababu upako unadondoka tu kila mahali. Because God showed me clearly marriages are coming back. Kwa sababu Mungu alinionyesha wazi wazi kwamba ndoa zinarudi. Businesses are coming back. Biashara zinarudi. Success is coming back. Kufaulu kunarudi. He told me the glory is coming down. Akaniambia utukufu unashuka. And so I want you to do something. Don't go telling people that the thing has died. Na kwa hiyo nataka ufanye kitu. Usiende ukiambia watu kwamba kitu kimekufa. Learn from the shuna my woman don't say don't say that the marriage is over nifunze kutoka kwa mwanamke mshunemu usiseme kwamba ndoa imekufa ama imekufa prophetically to tell you it's not over niko hapa kinabii kukwambia kwamba haijakwisha don't say that there's nothing left in the bank account usiseme kwamba hakuna kilichobakia kule kwa zina yako ya benki i'm here to let you know it's not over niko hapa kukwambia kwamba haijakwisha you see faith does not acknowledge what the enemy is doing it acknowledges what god is doing unaona imani ni kwamba haitambui kile adui anafanya lakini inatambua kile Mungu anafanya and i'm here to let you know that god can change that situation na niko hapa kukwambia kwamba Mungu anaweza badilisha hiyo hali
she did not announce the death of her boy faith for faith to work in your situation do not spread bad news about it don't go, from, don't go from place to place telling people who cannot help with your situation what is going on oh, find an Egyptian next to you when I look at Israelites and Egyptians, Egyptians are the ones who don't want you to grow. Look at them and tell them, neighbor, I know you don't know me very well. <laughs> but I want you to know I have somebody that knows my name. And I didn't come all the way to Mombasa to go back empty handed. Hey, I came to get my son back. <laughs> <laughs>